All right, here we go. How you doing out there in YouTube world? This is Richard on Flip and Pegger LLC, which, look at my hat, it's not spelled backwards. It's just because I got my phone turned around and it takes pictures backwards. And my old bald head be too shiny if you go to watching it. So, <clears throat> thought I'd do this little video, kind of give you a little history on me and what I've been doing. I uh, got my CDL in 2015 right as I was getting out of the Army. Which a big thank you goes to Sergeant Major Lynch for letting me do that. And I uh, got my CDL through NTS up there in Alaska. Or no, I'm sorry. It's NIT is their acronym. Northern Industrial Technology or something like that. That's who I went to to get my CDL. To their school, paid for it out of pocket. <coughs> and then uh, I picked up a local job up there running, running some stuff. And had a real short route. And was home all the time. And really easy, easy work uh, running a day cab. Uh, retired out of the Army, and uh, we moved south, and I went to work at uh, J. Wommels and Sons out of Willington. A little family-owned hardware store. They had a, needed a delivery driver, and I was running that, and then uh, Michael Honeycutt pulled me over, and I started running tractor and trailer with him. had end dumps running gravel. If you don't know what an end dump, it's a uh, trailer that goes behind a truck, and it's got a bucket that dumps and the stuff falls out the end that's why it's called an end dump uh, so we would run little short wagons and uh, wagons in a term for a trailer we just run little short wagons <clears throat> doing local delivery and delivering some stuff there on fort bragg for gravel and whatnot and uh different size and what i ain't gonna get into that so we're gonna move on anyway i ran for them for a while and while we was working there we had a guy come on during the winter time would run with us and uh his name is jeff and he owned a truck, and he ran containers. Well, Jeff was talking to me about the money that the containers were making, and I looked into it, and it seemed like I could make this a little bit better than what I was doing. So uh, I bought a truck, bought a old uh, 2013 Volvo, had uh, 650,000 miles on it, 10 speed, something I can drive, and I uh, bought the Volvo, and uh, it was a death motor truck, and it had 650,000 miles on it, and I wasn't too smart at the time about what was what, and that truck, uh, it gave me problems. I made money with it, but it, it had its problems. I lost the turbo, and I lost the injector, and had to do some pretty significant repairs, but I had a premium 2000 warranty on that, and they helped me a lot. Uh, that warranty was about five grand, and they put uh, about 15,000 in that truck. So if it hadn't been for them, I'd have been, I'd have been as quick. I was able to save my money and scrape my diamonds together and, and, and trade that truck, get it paid off, get it traded in. And, and now I'm in a 2015 Freightliner Coronado, which is a glider. Uh, I didn't buy a Fitzgerald glider, bought one that was built there in North Carolina. And H&H &H Freightliner put me in this truck, and that's who built it. And it had uh, five or 350,000 miles on it. It's a 10-speed. Wished it was a 13, but it's 10-speed. Series 60 Detroit, and that's the big kicker right there. That is the most known and reliable motor that there is. And I've been in trucking a while, and ain't nobody got nothing bad to say about no Series 60. It may be a little unpaired compared to some Caterpillars, but as far as reliability and cheap to work on, any mechanic can work on it. Uh, compared to the, to the car world, I tell people it's like a Chevrolet 350. Any mechanic worth their salt can work on this truck. It's a common motor. Parts is cheap, and <clears throat> that makes labor costs go way down. Uh, I can do an end frame, which is a motor rebuild on this truck, cheaper than I can do a damn turbo on that Volvo. And that's the truth. So I'm in it, and I love it. But uh, I started running containers and was, was making pretty decent money at it. And I say pretty decent. I was bringing home uh, somewhere between twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a week, easy after tax and everything and uh but you had you had to do a lot of miles uh the, that's where i started learning about the per mile thing about running per mile freight uh how much it pays you versus how much you're spending and if you're only making 30 cents a mile and you want to make a lot of money you got to turn a lot of damn miles which in turn puts a lot of miles on your truck <laughs> which in turn starts wearing it out because they've got a life expectancy of this. And if you get there quickly, it's time for major repairs. And uh, 
I had decided I, I'd learned about all I could about the trucking world through containers and what I could and couldn't do with as far as money and, and how much time I could spend out. And I launched out on my own. And I, I got my own authority in October of last year, and I've been running my own authority ever since. Um, in March, I put on a leased operator, and uh, this fall, I added a company truck to the roster. So I'm running three trucks right now. Or two trucks with a lease operator, whichever way you want to say it, it don't matter. But uh, that's who I am and what I got. <sighs> I had a lot of learning experiences over this, this the course of this last year. I mean, it's it's been a damn education. For one, insurance. Insurance got awful high your first year. And two, finding loads. There's a lot of brokers won't touch you won't touch you don't matter how much experience you got or how, how old you are don't make a damn they will not touch you because you're new on the authority list i don't understand why but that's just the way it is so you got to make a name for yourself about being dependable and being and being honest and being i'm going to do what i'm told and and, and i'm going to do what i say i want to do and i say what i'm going to do and what i can't do and i, I know kind of learning my own limitations on trucking and knowing your own limitations of what you can and can't do goes far about being able to tell people what you can do and what you can't do. And that helps you. Uh, so when I talk about them insurance rates, people want to know how much insurance is. You're looking at 30 grand a year, at least, on your own authority for your first year. It just, it's high. I ran three, I'm running three trucks now. And I pay thirty six thousand a year for three trucks, and one of them is 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 uh, all three of us running power only. We've added a step deck to the fleet <clears> that we split around, but uh, my insurance went from being thirty thousand dollars for just me to thirty six thousand dollars on three trucks. I mean, it's just, and that's just because we had a year in business, and now brokers will mess with it. You know, that it nobody. <clears throat> have no limitations on you. Uh, King of Freight's the only one I know that has a year limitation, but we had two trucks, so we was able to run for this, some of their stuff. So that's just a little basic information on who I am and, and what I do. Uh, now time to the thank yous. I've already hit Sergeant Major Oakley. No, Sergeant Major, Sergeant, Sergeant Major Lynch. Oakley is my, or Oakley is my next one. But Sergeant Major Lynch got me going into trucking by allowing me to get my CDL. And I'll always be thankful for that. Uh, some of the podcasts and YouTubers that I listen to, Steve Oatley ran FreightBrokerLive.com. If you don't understand how a freight broker operates and you don't understand about rates and, and why rates are never the same or stuff like that, listen to some of his older stuff. Uh, he's into the PT News Network now, and he puts out a lot of good information on it, but it's less about trucking and more about what's going on in the world. And uh, But some of Steve Oatley's older stuff <clears throat> is really good information. Uh, his his information now has changed, shifted from trucking to what's going on in the world. So it's not bad information. I'm just saying some of the stuff he put out earlier in his career really helped me. Um, I listened to JJ the Trucker. He's a leased operator that runs with Prime. Uh, he's fun to listen to. He's really entertaining. He's got some good videos with some good footage that he takes that drone and whatnot and and he's pretty knowledgeable about prime i mean he that's where he got his start and he's still kind of new to it and you tell but <clears throat> some of the older truckers can look at him and and, and see but oh boy pretty sharp uh trucking with dave is another one i listen to i really enjoy that i don't know why he just starts off dude you can be in a, you just be in a kind of a meh mood and listen to one of jay or trucking with dave's videos and <laughs> put a smile on your face i just hear him now what's going on youtube or whatever he starts off with and then he's always dogging on himself and well i don't want to get in trouble i just i laugh about it it's, it's and, and and you tell he's kind of new but he owns it and i i really like his channel um that's the two main ones I listen to. Uh, some other people that really got me going in this industry was uh, Tucker with RTS Capital. They're a factoring company. Factoring is they buy your, so you run for somebody and you, you complete the run and now you've got, uh, you got to invoice them. Well, in our industry, once you get done doing what you're done, 
you submit the invoice and they've got about 30 to 45 days to pay you. Well, what RTS does is they pay you within 24, 48 hours. You sell the invoice to them for a small percentage. And when I say small, I'm like 2.5%. So you look at $25 on $1,000 and you have your money in, in 24 to 48 hours. So that's always nice. And they have a credit check program that'll, uh, let you know what brokers you, you should be dealing with, which ones you shouldn't. And there's a lot of damn crooks out there. And, and, uh, my, matter of fact, my first run I ever run as my own authority, I, I got, I, I had to settle with their damn, uh, company, their bond company. And I wound up settling for 30 cents on the dollar. Charged the man a thousand dollars, got paid 300. And that didn't, that, that didn't cover my damn fuel. Uh, well, it did cover fuel, but it didn't cover my expenses and stuff on that run. And it ain't what I agreed to. I mean, I agreed to $1,000, got paid 300 because the dude was a fucking crook. And I didn't know it. I mean, I was brand new to the industry, and uh, I got took advantage of. And if I'd have been running RTS Capital, that wouldn't have happened. That'd have been, because even on their their uh, credit check program <clears throat> that you run on every broker that you want to do a, a factoring for, it would have caught it, and I wouldn't have lost that money. So RTS Capital, uh, they're one of the better ones out there. There's there's a few other factoring companies out there that I could talk about, but RTS is the one that I used. And uh, they were fair and honest, and they done right what they said. Uh, and part of that goes with Mason, who runs their fuel card program, that uh, their fuel card that I got, is saving me somewhere between 12 cents and 50 cents a gallon on fuel. <coughs> and uh, that adds up quick. Uh, it's got a $6 a month card fee, 50 cents every time you swipe that card. But I guarantee you on the first fill up, you can make that money back. Uh, I've got one spot that I stop at and get fuel religiously. And then I'm saving 60 cents a gallon over the pump price. Uh, pilots, you'll save some money, but there's cheaper fuel out there. You get you, you save more money with like the speedways and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that I'll launch into a video at some point about that card. Uh, it's sort of like my Com Data card. The 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 RTS got their own app. The same way you can watch that Com Data and uh, see what money is and and how to use apps on saving fuel. But uh, it's got a good program. And that's Mason down there. He does that. <laughs> Another one, one of my buddies, Ping Pong. And American Freight Relocators, talk to him on the phone all the time. A lot of us running down the road, you'll see a trucker wearing a headset about like that right there. And they, they just jabbering away, and that's that's what we're doing. We're talking to each other because ain't nobody talking on the CB no more. <clears throat> so we'll jibber jabber with one another and, and uh, ping pong down there and that's his CB handle down there. American Freight Relocators, I told him today that I'd mention him, and now you've been mentioned, but did you really need to drop that ass because ain't but one of you. On American Freight Relocators. He's American Freight Relocator. Uh, I told you I'd ding you on that. Uh, another thing, one last thing I'm going to hit on is, and uh, I'm going to end this video, is uh, a game we like to play, and some of y'all are part of it. If you're driving a truck right now, that you may be you that we're doing it with. Um, we have a game called Tag. And what Tag is, is you have to take a picture of a truck driver wearing flip-flops, either with or without socks or slides or whatever the hell you want to call them things. And uh, jogging pants type stuff or shorts, basketball shorts. That's we, we play tag with that. You take a picture of one and you send it. You're not allowed to take pictures more than two of them in the same location that you're currently at. And then you, you tag somebody in the group with that picture and now they got to get one and they can't tag you back they got to tag somebody else in the group and y'all are just making this game way too easy i mean really <clears throat> if i get out of my truck i'm wearing either pants or in the summertime i wear jean shorts but i've got on steel toe boots even if i'm going to the damn shower I wear my shit in there i get cleaned up and then I put my pants and my boots back on and I walk back to my truck. I don't walk in flip-flops. I don't walk in damn Crocs. I'm wearing boots. <laughs> I'm a damn truck driver. I ain't a steering wheel holder. I ain't a joke. And y'all need to dress the part. I mean, if you showed up and you were delivering to me and you're wearing that junk, 
One, I'm going to turn you away because you're going to lose a foot. It's going to happen. You're going to get something's going to run over your foot or a pallet jack or evidently y'all ain't having to do the work. But uh, <clears throat> don't be like that out here. I mean, you're worse than the dude throwing trash out on the ground beside your truck, which is another thing we don't like. Don't pour your piss bottles out on the damn pavement. Don't throw your trash out of your truck up underneath your trailer. Clean up after yourself and be somebody. And that's that's what I want to impart to you right now as I close this video out. If nothing else, if you don't know how to be somebody, at least like you act like you are somebody. And I appreciate you. So, that's it for this video. Uh... If you kind of like what I'm spilling here, go ahead and like and subscribe, and you get a little ding notification to YouTube when I put a new one out, which I drive a lot, and I sleep a little, and then I'll be able to fill in the YouTube once in a while. So from now, that's Flippin' Burger out.